I had worked with him on a, a Kenzo uh, ad, uh, and we kept in touch, and uh, he was helping me with a film that I was uh, writing, and just we were talking back and forth. And then he said, um, you know, there's this thing that I wrote, and I thought it was, um, I, I was like, you know, I would love to read it, and I read it, and I was like, it's in, I was in, like, I couldn't stop reading it. I was so intimidating. Greg Rackey's movies are crazy, and I thought he was like this scary, I don't know. I've yeah. auditioned for him before, and it never went anywhere. He never would, like even look at me, and I was like, this guy's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I got such a different vibe, of, like, because Greg was in the very first audition for me, and he was just like so chill and like so cool, I don't like know what so he was sweet. Some power like how he man. is, you know. I feel like much is made. Yeah, much is. Everyone's like, how is it like working with Rocky? Like, it's that yeah. disconnect between the artist and their and what they make, and everyone wants the artist to live their material, right? And it's or, or like be as. You know, and and uh, be as uh, punk rock or as anarchic as, as their... Uh... Greg's pretty punk rock. He is pretty punk rock. Yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. Hard He's got tattoos on his knuckles. Like, yeah. I don't know. I live my art. I wear a thong all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've seen it. I've seen that thong. <laughs> they called me and it was... It, I read the script and read, read all ten uh, episodes immediately. And it was surreal. And I think really, not just Greg, but, but everyone a part of this. Like, I, I've had the pleasure to work um, in this industry now for like 10 years and very broad and very avant-garde stuff and that, that's what I love because you can express yourself and I, when, uh, when we were working and we are doing this and we are in the, the read-through and it just like was coming alive and it's just like we're just like Oh my God! This is happening. The fever, that, what are we in for? That fever dream five-hour table read that we. Yeah. Oh my God! Read don't the entirety remind me. of the whole. All ten. Show. All Sat ten. down. Do you remember those peanut butter cookies? Yeah, yeah I did. Those oh were gosh, excellent. They were so good. Yeah, yeah peanut butter cookies. Yeah, they <laughs> missed out. That's what I remember from. Anyway. Me. Next time. <laughs> Wow, he's Great. the, yeah. the easiest person to work with. He made me feel really comfortable. We had to do some pretty intense stuff, Evan mm -hmm. and I, and um, I had never played a gay role before, uh, never kissed a, a boy, um, and oh, it man. was a oh, man. Sorry, a oh, yes. very <laughs> man. manly, <laughs> hairy man. <laughs> that ours was on, not on camera. Yeah. Um, <laughs> talking about me and Evans, yes. uh, and. Uh. I remember that day was just a breeze and fun. I, we were laughing fun. and, it, and it, w it was great. There's very few half hour comedies that have like um, um, a steady drum beat of um, cliffhangers and things that are going on. Mostly the, this, the, the, the medium is friends all together and their personalities and how they collide with no actual thing. And with this like overhang of the alien and the dread and all the, uh, and, if, and if I'm insane or if, or if it's really real or is there an invasion and. And like the way. Ulysses just kind of has this whole interdimensional type being at the same time. You're like, wait, is this kind of happening yeah. or what is happening? They play, they blur the line really yeah. well. And I, yeah. and I, we talk about this a lot. We were just saying like, if whatever you end up feeling about the show, there's like nothing on it. There's nothing like it on television, and that's hard with 500 shows <laughs> on television, right? Like 500 plus. Like you might hate it, but you can never say that this is something you've seen before.